What's up, my friends and family and anyone else who listens to this? I uh, Welcome to another episode of The Tangent. I am uh, Kian, and uh, I'm here today with... Max. I'm Ray Guy. All right, so guys, um, before we get into it, The Tangent is always us talking about weird stuff, and uh, we've been watching some weird TV from what I've been hearing from everyone else. Ryan, the only weird thing Ryan's been watching is his vomit, so... How you feeling, buddy? Good. Good. Much better now. <laughs> just take some Sprite, you just not do the Sprite thing? I hydrate like crazy when I'm sick, mm-hmm. so it's just water for me. You just drank copious amounts of water? Lots and lots of water. I'm, gl- I'm glad you're alive. Like, I was really worried. Um, combination of uh, finding replacements that night because everyone was sick, <laughs> and... Uh, just a whole lot of shit going on, like, um, I was, I, uh, <laughs> I was still riling from the weird anxiety attack I had at the football game, <laughs> and so, like, everyone's like, oh, I'm sick, I can't make it, I'm sick, I'm like, oh, shit, I'm gonna jump off the ledge, it's only four foot, but I'm gonna jump off. <laughs> <laughs> a little walk over and found Kian laying in the yard, just laying there, he's like, I jumped, I'm in heaven now. I'm, I'm seeing gonna- the stars, Max! It's night. I'm seeing the stars like Marilyn Monroe and... Gr- <laughs> but I... Yeah, but man, I, 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 I just gotta say this on mic. Gil. Boy. <laughs> is the most on-to-it guy ever. No matter what we do. <laughs> Gil will make it on Saturday night even if none of us are there. Right. Not even that. Gil always asks us. Do you guys want ice cream? Like, that dude could go, like, how, how, like, everyone else does. Like, I'm gonna get food, fuck you guys. Gil's like, do you guys want anything while I'm out? And I'm just like, Gil, you don't have to keep doing this. <laughs> I told you not to buy Ryan the whiskey. <laughs> right? It's okay. Kean drunk half of that in one night. I will, I, I, I like I said, I'll, I'll pay, I'll, I'll, I'll pay for Ryan's thing. That, that was on me. So, Gil, I, I will give you the 20 bucks. But, like, no, he is so on it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I... Except for, like, he stays at my house and watches Neo Yokio. <laughs> he sat there and watched all six episodes. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm going to pass out. He's like, okay. Zach and him just sat there and watched it. I have no idea how the fuck they got through that movie show. I don't know how I got through that show. Did you watch it? No. Did you ever see a trailer for it? No. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, you're Wait, no. Lucky. I watched one episode of it, and then I was just like, yeah, I'm not watching this. Lol. Right? Is it not... That, that show is weird. Is it not dumb? Like, I don't know about you, so we'll just do our brief, brief shit review of this. I hated this show with a burning passion. It was really bad. But I could not stop watching said show. Right? I watched it in one sitting. Right. I also watched it in one sitting. It's not even, like, the concept or anything of it that bothers me. It's, uh... Smith's kid. Is it Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Jaden Smith does a horrible job voice acting, and that's what bothers me. The entire series is a shit voice acting. The only one who was a good voice actor was the grandma. Right. Susan Sarandon? Yeah. Like, everyone else, besides his two, like, super, like, fucking hood friends... We're phoning it in. Yeah. The entire time. Like, right. the thing that bothered me is their voice work. This is, it's not a Japanese anime. It was animated for English audience. For an English audience. And they still couldn't do it And they it still right. couldn't dub it right. Like, the only thing that made me laugh is the Toblerone joke. That became a meme. The giant Toblerone. It was funny the first time, and they just got irritating. Right. And so, I just... Watch Big Mouths. I think, see, in the, that's my thing. Like, the Yokio came out, and then Big Mouths came out. Big Mouth is such a weird show to me, though. But I always liked Nick Kroll. Hmm. And it's his take on puberty. It's a weird take on puberty. Um, Rafi is in it, playing one of the friends. Plays Jay, the, the biracial kid who does magic. And, like, the freak out he does reminds me of RJ. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Max reminds me of the, his friend that's hitting puberty. Constantly prepubescent. Constantly prepubescent. And awkward around everyone that isn't his friends. Yeah. I'm quiet. Leave me alone. It's, it's <laughs> fine. And so, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna hit a little heavy first. We're gonna hit heavy, hit light, hit heavy, hit light all this week. So... 
The first story we have to talk about is that Hugh Hefner died. Oh, no. Yeah, man. Who, who would have ever known? Hugh Hefner, like, okay, this sounds super weird, but I did a lot of research on Hugh Hefner after he died to talk about this. Because Kian likes porn. No, I don't. I See, I don't even like porn. Porn's weird. <sighs> We're going to talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> porn's, porn's weird. John sent us the link, link, with, link with the octopus lady spewing octopuses from her vagina. I'm like, if this is what it is, I'm done. I'm finished. So, Hugh Hefner died at the age of 91 year old. He's the Playboy founder. The thing that I really found interesting about Hugh Hefner is that he never, he didn't, he failed at everything else. Like, sex was his calling. He tried to be a cartoonist in high school and in the army because apparently you can be a cartoonist in the army. Hmm. Yeah, haven't you heard of Dr. Seuss? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. I kind of like wanted to be a thing now. But like, he, he died... And then he came across Playboy magazine and made millions of dollars. Um, Hugh Hefner had a weird had a weird life though. Um, funny thing is, Hugh Hefner didn't lose his virginity till he was twenty one to his wife. Now yeah, look at him. you go, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> but like, Hugh Hefner did a lot of good things, but he also did a lot of fucked up things throughout his life too. Like, yeah, like um. You hear stories of Gloria Steinman, which, again, I like Gloria Steinman, but I feel like because she... I don't know how you feel, and I'm glad your wife is no longer listening to some of this stuff. Oh, I'm sure she's still listening. About, like, feminism and things like that. But Gloria yeah. Steinman was one of those toxic feminist people who, like, everyone was... a. Se- I don't know about you, but that's how I feel sometimes. Yeah. When I listen to her article, she's, like, a super sexist pig. And she's like, I went undercover as a Playboy bunny, and people were manhandling me and things like that. I'm like, all right, well, that's very understandable. You are also dressed up as a Playboy bunny. I know it has no thing, but if you're in the Playboy mansion, I mean, that is the job is to... That, yeah, that's what you're doing. You signed up for this. Caress people. You're a hostess. But he also did a lot of really messed up things, like he did Playboy spreads of Brooke Shields when she was 11, and he, you know, had three girlfriends at the time. Hugh Hefner had a channel, had a TV show about him having sex with young ladies on the E! Network. It was just a reality show that my mom used to watch because she's like, I'm so sick of keeping up the Kardashians. They're so fake and shallow. Let me watch this TV show about Hugh Hefner and his wife and, and his buddies. I'm like, what? Uh, mom! But he, you know... Say what you want about the guy. The guy opened up a lot of conversation about human sexuality within America. Like, he made things that were... I mean, he started out in the 60s. The 60s were so confined. He made things that, you know, opened up people to be like, maybe the woman's naked body isn't all just bad. It's beautiful. So... I mean, R.I.P., dude. You lived. You you lived. A, you lived. A, you lived a life that I could never live. I, I don't. I don't think I could ever live that life. I. I, I mean, like, I feel like Ryan is like bitches every night. Oh yeah. Max is like. That'd be stressful as fuck. Max is like, do I take them out to dinner? I would. I would sleep if I lived in the Playboy Mansion. I would just be like, I don't want to deal with any of this. I'm going to bed. No, that's very understandable. Everybody just go away. Now, have you guys ever heard of the uh, the uh, country of Uganda? Yes. Yeah. All right. So we have a very interesting video of a fistfight breaking out in Congress in Uganda. Beautiful. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> World Star! <laughs> oh shit! Wow. Everybody just dropped because he thought he had a gun. Oh good god! Holy fucking shit! Are there not like security officers in this place? Yeah, they're telling him to calm down. I don't speak whatever language this is, but I'm pretty sure you couldn't make out shit anyways. 
Jesus. Damn. So, this was a fight to talk about what the presidential age limit should be. Mm. So, um... That was like some world star shit. I don't know yeah. what y'all guys are thinking. They're sitting there. They're just like, boy, you gone to get it. Right. <laughs> oh, God. They're just like, world star. You <laughs> gone to <laughs> done it now. <laughs> <laughs> you gone. <laughs> <laughs> you gone to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember why I don't hang out with you guys every day anymore. <laughs> Yo, that was so fucked up. That was some crazy shit, though. This makes me realize, Congress, U.S. Congress, step up your fucking game. Yeah, I need to see some fist fights between some, like, 70-year-old white men. I want to see Chuck Schumer fist-to-fist with Mitch McConnell world star style like this shit. I feel like you'll get shit done. Yeah. Instead of fucking elections and, like, voting and shit, you just fucking fist fight to see if you, your shit gets through. <laughs> oh, my God! WWE would go to a whole nother level. That's what I was thinking. They were fucking busting chairs and shit and, like... Yeah, dude jumped a chair, like, all the way across the room. Right. And then they said, we take, like, my... This is some WWE-level shit. Like, Vince McMahon was like... I'm going to turn this into a storyline of the WWE now. Yeah, he probably was. The dude was taking, like, microphones and chugging shit. I'm like, this is insane. This happens in our... Like, in my life, I'm like, dude, is this real life? And I'm like, these are politicians. That's some next-level shit. That is some next-level shit. Donald Trump, you need to watch this video. You should make Congress work like this. Don't make Congress work like this, Donald Trump. I'm only kidding. Please don't really do that. He's doing it. Shit. <laughs> you said it. He got the idea. It's gone. Yeah, he's like that young brown kid. I like him. British model turns piece of her labia into a designer jewelry. What? What? British model turns pieces of her labia into designer jewelry. Why? Jewelry should always reflect on a personal style. In this case, British mom Tracy Kiss. It also a memor... Memor... Memorializes her private parts. Earlier this year, the model turned fashion blogger underwent a labiaplasty in part to remove a cyst that the doctor said has caused by friction in the area. 28-year-old Kiss then blogged about her experience in a very, very elaborate details at her own personal blog. Now Kiss is adding another wrinkle to the story. Turns out she shaved some of the parts removed during the surgery and turned it into a one-of-a-kind choker. Oh. My. God. I can't even... A vagina that. choker. Oh, I know what I'm getting my mom for Christmas. <laughs> Yo, this is, this is crazy. This is crazy. Stay woke, everyone. Right? <laughs> we actually have that video that you posted that I'm going to show Max. I fucking love that video. It'll be my stay woke video is the next video after this. Um, <laughs> it's, it's an SNL sketch. It's an it's SNL. Amazing. It is it's just amazing. This is insane to me. Like, like I, I'm glad she survived the cyst or whatever. It could cause ovarian cancer. And, like, but bronzing it and wearing it as a choker, like, the choker is already a symbol of, like, she has daddy issues. How are you doing? Now she's like, choker, daddy issues, I also survived recovery. Hey girl, how you doing? I see that you've got a fucked up life. I'm Kian. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, 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 would you do that if like you had testicular cancer and you like no. decided to wear like, You're... put it in one of your gauges? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. What? <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Don't don't you don't you want that, Ryan? Don't. No, I'd want him to throw it in the trash. Don't, Get it gone. Don't you want that? I, I mean, like, it's would disgusting. you? Disgusting! It's a piece of Fuck rotting no. flesh hanging on you. She bronzed it. It's it's still, still there. Disgusting. Right? I'm not I'm not I'm not defending her. I'm just saying, like, it's it 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 it. it, it. I don't know. Gross like, as fuck. Right. God, some people are weird. Right. Like, I mean, I, I'm firmly believed to each their own, but sometimes I'm like, 
fuck, are you sure? Ah, man, like, ah, just, that's like some shit you give to someone that you fucking hate, you know? <laughs> like, that choker is some shit you give to someone you fucking hate. Like, I would give that to my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Which one? My ex-girlfriend. I'm not saying... We say no names on Mike with our relationships or anything like that. I mean, that is... The first one or the third one? Y'all the motherfuckers. The seventh or... <laughs> we're just friends. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. All right. Stay woke, Max. Now we're going to watch the, the SNL Levi Stay Woke. Oh, this is my favorite. Woke ad <laughs> that uh, Ryan just cannot get enough of. Dude, I love it. Ryan Gosling's in it. <laughs> My jeans tell me I'm a man. My jeans tell me I'm a man. That I'm skinny. A child. Yo, you don't know me, jeans. <laughs> I'm not a child. That's not me. <laughs> I'm a child. I'm me. I'm unique. I'm woke. I'm woke. I'm woke. So, why aren't my jeans? Now they are. Introducing Levi Woke's sizeless. Oh my god. Levi's heard that if you're not woke, it's bad. So we made these. You find someone by their style? That's offensive. That's why Levi woke have no style. What's my size? Why don't you try asking me about my accomplishments? Mamas are size me. They fit everybody. Because they fit nobody. So what colors do they come in? Colors? I'm triggered. This color. And you label this color? That is the color gray. They're not brown, but they not not brown. It's not <laughs> colors. None of which are dominant. Just like our country. Oh, wait. <laughs> what the fuck am I watching? Pockets. Pockets so separate. <laughs> Who says I have hands? You getting this yet? The jeans are woke. No! Do they come in men's and women's? No. Do they come in person? What do you think? That's why woke's got unifly. 180 <laughs> degrees of gender non-conformity. He's got a rock on the bathroom. Do yours. What don't you get? They woke. Woke. Get woke. We're woke. Yo, hold up. Are my wokes made in some factory by Indonesian kids? <laughs> nah, they're made right here in the USA by white kids. <laughs> Oh, Levi Wokes, available exclusively at Ross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that so much. I love that sketch so much. <laughs> uh, I think we know a handful of people would actually buy this shit and wear them because they're woke. <laughs> like our siblings. Our sibling. Your sibling. My brother's dumb as shit. He doesn't know what woke is. He just got done killing ducks, and I bet Hannah's like, "You're killing nature." Yeah, she probably is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. your sister would wear this shit and actually wear, wear it as a statement. <laughs> she would fucking wear those, like, every day. <laughs> she'd be like, fuck it, I'm woke. I'm woke. Your son's gonna be there first day of kindergarten wearing these woke jeans. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to... When do I get to kill myself? Only if they were real. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they will be. They probably are it's here very soon. a matter of time. <laughs> I'm gonna Google this, see if they are selling woke jeans. They highly doubt it. They they will. I'll give you next week. They'll they'll have Etsy will have someone selling these woke jeans, and people will actually buy them. It'll be a size too small for everyone. For everyone. I fucking love this skit. It's a great skit. I, I really enjoy it. I love this skit. Oh, this is another skit you should see before before we get into other news. The fliplets is one of is actually, ah! Hold up. The fliplet skit, super hilarious. It it is it it is in it is involved with numerous like it it it, it just really gets me every time I watch this skit. Fucking fliplets. Fliplets. It's the they're making fun of uh, the property brothers. Oh my god. I hate the Property Brothers. You're watching HGTV, cause your house sucks. And if you love the Property Brothers, just wait till you meet Pete, Zeke, and Tristan. It's <laughs> the Fliplets. I'm Pete. 
I've been a licensed realtor since I was 18. If I can't find a house you love, it just ain't out there. <laughs> the name's Zeke, and I've been flipping houses for the past 12 years. I'm the guy who'll turn whatever nightmare he finds you into the home of your dreams. I'm Tristan, and when our parents divorced, I was the only one that went to live with our dad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've never talked about what happened. The Flintlands. Just three brothers renovating houses and busting their <laughs> This guy does all the manual labor, which, according to my calculations, makes me the smart one. Oh, please, Poindexter. You couldn't drive an elephant at a steering wheel on it. <laughs> I don't think they ever fully grieved the death of our family. <laughs> <laughs> Not really the platform, buddy. No. So rather than face the demons, that they have, they go city to city trying to build the home they never had. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> We're all about the three R's. Refurbish, remodel, and... Religion is a drug. <laughs> <laughs> it's renovate! <laughs> it's I've been working with my hands my entire life. It's my passion. Heck, when I was 12, I built a treehouse with central AC. Yeah, and even though I got a couple offers on it, I couldn't sell the old gal. There were just too many memories. When I was 12, I watched a man get hit by a bus. <laughs> and I had plenty of time to intervene, but I was frozen, not by fear, but by a dreadful excitement. <laughs> and I just watched him. Like it was all a little show that God was putting on just for me. <laughs> a marionette <laughs> dangling before the lapping flames of his master's furnace. And in that moment, I died a little unto myself. But I was reborn as the lizard I was destined to be. How can I watch it? I've never mentioned this before. <laughs> Some might say, that was the day the light inside me dimmed. But I would say that was the moment that the darkness began to shine. The flipless. This was the usable footage. I don't. My boy Ryan Gosling. Just, I don't even know. Just that it again. What? <laughs> uh, is this why I don't watch SNL? I love SNL. Like it's just I'm I'm talking about this because we're gonna get a little bit we're gonna get a little bit heavy soon. But like I love SNL. It is because of this reason. <laughs> Ryan Gosling when he's ever on SNL is fired. There's always those certain people that when they go to SNL they shine, and you're like, why aren't you in a comedy movie? Ryan Gosling is one of them. Like, I could totally see Ryan doing, like, after he, after the Pretty Boy stuff ends, like, you know, look at Ryan here, musician, now he's on a podcast. <laughs> His Pretty Boy life ended, and he's like, hey guys, I'm on a podcast now, you can hear my voice. Because his body's dwindling. Very sadly. Can I have a not? hairline? I don't have a receding hairline. Hiding, hiding his shame with the beard. Uh, he's probably got old man wrinkles. I have a beard because I look like I'm 15 if I shave. <laughs> Mm, I'd say that too to make excuses. <laughs> At least I'm not fat. I can totally deal with that. It's very understandable. That was hurtful. <laughs> I'm not hurt by anything anymore. Nothing hurts me. Mm -hmm. I'm dead inside. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a salad after this. <laughs> ah no! So, like Ryan said, uh, now it's gonna get a little, little, little heavy. We're just gonna, we're just gonna say. Before I say this, I do have sympathy for what happened in Las Vegas. It It is a very terrifying thing that happened. It's a very terrifying thing that uh, we seem to be facing every year now. Yeah. That, um, you know, this Las Vegas shooting. And I made it a call to myself when, if there's any tragedies we talk about on the tangent. I'm not going to bring up the guy's name because fuck that guy. I don't want him to be famous. What we, what we do know is... Um, he killed himself after this. Mm -hmm. uh, he killed at least 59 people. 
at the Country Music Festival is extensively planned to massacre, placing cameras in his suit in nearby hallways so he could see when police officers were closing in. It was pre-planned extensively. So, the thing that just bothers me about this, and it's just always sad, is that, like, I have... I have footage of it, but I don't want to show it. Like, I, I have it linked on here, but I just... I watched it. Yeah, there's a lot of people sharing videos of it on Facebook and stuff, and... It is fucking unsettling. Please, if there's ever tragedies like this and there's video footage, please do not share the video footage. It's right. It's not appropriate for those that... People... ...have suffered losses from this and to, to have that on hurt there. and injured right. to be sharing it around the way you are just leave it be and let them mourn right and that's the thing I have it I had it I had it hyperlinked and I was like I don't before we started I'm like I don't think I can show this because it is fucking hard to watch yeah um it is fucking it is it is a fucking terrible thing to say and you know I'm not even going to make this a political thing because the news organizations are already making political. No, because I think it's very, especially after something this fresh happens, I think it's very inappropriate to get political about it so soon. I see, You need proper time to let the people involved mourn, and you need proper time for not only them, but the people of the country to process this and deal with it. When we're emotional, that's not the time to get political. They tell you that after you lose a loved one, you should wait at least a year before making a big life decision because you need to get all the emotion out of it. Yep. Right. So this, it actually actually affects someone around here. Like, I, I'm not going to say their name, but they're from Sutherland, Iowa, and sh- they got lost in the massacre, and they don't know where they are, and people are, like, you know, posting where to find them and things like that because it was such a massive rush. Like, people are in the hospitals, people don't even, her husband does, the, the husband doesn't even know where the person is, in which hospital. Mm-hmm. He was with the kids, so she could go to this thing. And that's the thing that's terrifying to me, and that's the thing that sucks about this whole scenario. This thing that sucks about every scenario that has happened here, though. I understand that it's a, it's been a year, but it's it's almost feeling like every year this is happening. And it's like, it's fucked up that we're now thinking this is a natural thing, though. We're treating this as a natural disaster when we shouldn't be having to have to deal with this. And this isn't me being like, we need more tighter gun controls or anything like that. It's a whole combination of things. It it, it, it sucks to know that, um, you know, just hearing people at work, someone, someone told me at work, he's like, I'm not going to listen to Jason Aldean anymore. Because apparently he knew, so he, and he ran and he didn't tell anyone else to run. Like, motherfucker, what would you do? Right. I made that point. I was like, what the fuck would you do? You hear guns? People first thought it was pyrotechnics. And so, I don't think you should be blaming Jason Aldean for not warning people. Because what are you supposed to do? You know what I mean? What, what, what can you do? What, 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 what is there you can do to, to warn people? I think running the fuck away is a pretty good warning. Be like, yo, dog, this is a bad idea. Right? Like, when the people on stage start running the fuck away, your first response should be, get the fuck out of there. The dude had... J- Jason Aldean... I don't even like Jason Aldean's music, but I'm, I'm gonna defend him. The that's, other- just like, that's just like a fight or flight situation. Right, and like, it was flight. Yeah, right? <clears throat> your natural instincts kick in. Some people fight, some people flight. Jason Aldean flights. Right. It's just... It, it's bizarre. The thing that's bizarre about this guy, though, it, it, when it comes to shooting, mm-hmm. is that people are like, well, he was he was 69, he was retired, he had no criminal record or anything like that. He had no sign of mental disorders or anything like that. But the thing that is making me super pissed off, though, and if you are one of those people who are posting this, that, like, the, the, I'll, I'll, I'll put... The, they're posting this conspiracy theory already, and I'm just... I'm just this no. this just makes me mad. People people are posting and sharing this conspiracy theory already. Um, it, it just makes me it makes me angry. It makes me pissed off that like someone has the nerve to say shit like this. It, it's just I, I'm getting to it. Sorry guys. It's uh, where where is it? And it's oh, okay. 
None of this adds up. 64-year-old millionaire that owns a plane in several homes. His brother said he only owned a couple of handguns. Police confiscated 23 weapons in a home and 19 in another, not including that he had an in-room. No military training, no weapon training, no weapon armor training, no police record, no radical background. Philippine... Oh, damn it. Filipino girlfriend that deleted social media accounts the day before his tragedy and left the country. So he purchased his own weapon, altered them to fire full auto, stockpiled them in an expensive hotel room, in broad daylight, and nothing looks strained by housekeeping or the thousands of cameras in Vegas. Built two platforms for two windows to assist his firing in position. Fired from the inside of the window, setting off the smoke alarms, but not allowing the muzzle flash to be seen outside the window. Plus, he placed closed circuit TV to see the hallway outside of his door. He did all this by himself, no training, no using Black Ops mercenary or sniper techniques. I'm not buying this bullshit. This shit makes me mad. Yeah. Is that... Like we were talking about the morning. This is the shit that pisses me off, though. Where everyone makes everything in a huge conspiracy theory. They did this with Sandy Hook. They did this with the fucking San Bernardino. And it makes me so angry because... What you're doing with that is spitting in the face of people who have died. Because of this. And it is so frustrating to see people already jumping on this, like, conspiracy, conspiracy theory bandwagon... Wagon, that it's the government. That's the government wanting to do gun control. Why? Why would they want to do that? Obama's not administration anymore. You have a red you have a red president that is for guns. Right. Why would that be why would that be any way of the government trying to create gun control? Mm -hmm. That that's the thing that makes me mad. And if you are a piece of shit who posts shit like that, you can go fuck yourself because I know it's not about you. Which is okay. But don't fucking do this to the people who do this... Sh who, who have felt this shit. Who who watched people die. And all this shit. It's not cool. So, like I said, we... Our hearts are out there in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, you know... You, what you can do... Donate. Donate your blood. Um... I have it right here. If you'd like to, if you would like to donate to the victims, you can go to VegasVictimsFund.org and donate through them. Uh, that's one option. There are a couple other websites that I know of. I think they have a GoFundMe page as well okay. yeah, that you can visit. So if you'd like to donate to them, I've already donated a little bit of money to that. Um, but that's VegasVictimsFund.org, and mm -hmm. then they also have a GoFundMe page. We will leave the link down below for this stuff. Um, you can also donate your blood. This is one of those times where it's, you know, um, I used to always joke or tell my mom, like, I don't want to do this. But then when, like, this shit happens, it's like, this is why your blood is, why you donate your blood. You, you're trying to save a life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you guys like Steven Seagal? No. <laughs> you guys like that, do you guys like that George Foreman? No. Would you like to see them fight? Not really. George no. Foreman just challenged Steven Seagal to a no-holds-barred fight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. On Monday, 60-year-old boxing legend used Twitter to challenge 65-year-old action movie star to a 10-round fight in Las Vegas. They're pulling the McGregor and Mayweather. Why? <laughs> Who would want to watch this? <laughs> Somebody's going to watch this. So, I mean, <laughs> this is his first tweet. George Foreman. Steven Seagal, I challenge you, one-on-one, I use boxing, you can use whatever. Ten rounds in Vegas. No weapons, hand-to-hand -hand only. <laughs> what the f Why? One-on-one, -on -one, I use boxing or whatever, he tweeted. He later clarified, no weapons. With fellow boxer Floyd Merriweather earning a reported $100 million for this bout with UFC star Conor McGregor, it could mean a handsome payday for Big George. It's not currently clear what prompted Foreman to lay down the gauntlet to the Under Siege star. It, that's the movie they choose to fucking talk about Steven Wait. Seagal. It may have something to do with Seagal's recent comments on National Football League players who protest by taking a knee during the anthem. However, Seagal, a Michigan-born actor who became a Russian citizen in 2016, last week called the pregame protest outrageous, a joke, and disgusting. Seagal has yet to comment on the proposal, but Foreman offers his certain captured the Im imagination of people on Twitter. Oh my god, check these videos out. This is one of the Twitter videos on this. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got 
God. <laughs> <laughs> the geezers at Caesars, Caesars Palace <laughs> Entertainment, oh December 30th, God. Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. Ah! <laughs> Sponsored by Funny MMA. That would possibly be the worst fight of all time. Oh, there's 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 more tweets, guys. We got we got more tweets. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's the dude in the house. <laughs> what? He's apparently eating a carrot. Yeah. The training begins. Oh, this is Thorin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Just fucking dancing around each other. Jet George Foreman, if Seagal won't take this offer, I will, in my wear, whatever, will be a taser in each hand. <laughs> <laughs> Make it so. Let's see. Steven Gall, I challenge you one on one. I use the George Foreman grill. You can use whatever. It's Ed Rouse in Vegas. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers. I want to see this happen. I don't know about you guys, but I want to see this happen. No, I just. I, I don't even think that fight would be entertaining. No. It'd be disappointing. There'd be like three punches between them, and one of them would be out of breath, and the other one would be down. It'd be like, I'm done. <sighs> That was like a half round. You win, Kiwasabi. It's always really cute when people want to be relevant again. <laughs> Lol. God damn. It's kind of heartbreaking. <laughs> Just like our next story, Tom Petty's dead. Yay. Yeah. I mean, Ed- not yay, but like, <laughs> that was all of the story. We're done. Does anyone, well, does anyone listen to the Heartbreakers or like... No. I don't. Okay. The only thing I knew, like, I, this makes me sound like a terrible host. The only thing I knew about Tom Petty was the Simpsons episode where Homer goes to rock camp. Lol. And Tom Petty loses a toe at the end. And he's yeah. crushing his way to Homer. He's like, hey, Homer. Hey, Gene. How you doing? No, Tom Petty. We haven't found your toe yet. Okay, I'll go. And he just leaves. Like, I, I mean, Tom Petty, Tom Petty, Tom Petty, a mainstay rock mainstay of rock with the Heartbreakers dies at 66. Tom Petty, a singer-songwriter and guitarist who melded, melded California rock and deep, stubborn Southern heritage to produce a long string of durable hits, dies Monday in Los Angeles. So, I mean, he's had some good songs, though. Mm. He's had some hit songs. He's had some hit songs. Man, he sued Sam Stone for one of his songs. Lol. Um... Uh, the thing I wanted to bring up about this story is that, like, I was telling Max in the beginning, it wasn't clarified whether or not Tom Petty was dead, so I felt like he had to die. <laughs> because people were already putting R.I.P. Tom Petty. Well, did you see that Rolling Stones called it early? Yeah. That yeah. he died and he hadn't actually died yet? And his daughter got really, really, really pissed off at Rolling Stones after I'm that. I'm sure. I would be? Yeah. Y'all motherfuckers see? And, like... Tom Petty died six hours later. Like, the first post I saw, Tom Petty didn't die until, like, 9 o'clock at night. Yeah. Like, everyone's like, oh my god, Tom Petty's dead, R.I.P. Yeah, I got the, I saw the notification come up in my news feed that Tom Petty was dead at, like, 3 o'clock or something like that. Something like that. So I was looking into it, and I was like, what the fuck, he's not dead yet. <laughs> right? I told Max this, I was, like, refreshing the Wikipedia page just to see that bracket, and I'm like, I don't see that bracket yet, man. I don't think he's dead. I feel like the internet killed Tom Petty. <laughs> right? They were requesting and just determined of it so much. That Tom yeah. Petty's like, Tom Petty's daughter's like, you have to die, Dad. Well, fuck. Fine, if it's for the fans. It's, it, 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 see, this is one of those things that has always got me about the internet. The internet is great and it is also terrible. Because the internet doesn't, you're, your uncle from Facebook posts shit that Hillary Clinton is a lizard lady and Tom Petty is dead before he's dead. The internet killed Tom Petty. I am just calling this. If we didn't have the internet, Tom Petty would be alive for another month. Well, a whole another month? A whole another month. But that's the thing. 
That's the thing. This is the reason why I wanted to bring up this news story. I am... I... Call me callow. I am... Most of the time, I'm never sad when a celebrity... There's certain celebrities that have died that I felt sad about. Tom Petty never influenced my life. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm just like, well, RIP. That, that's pretty sad for the people that cared about him. Right. There was a few. Chester Bennington was the only one this yeah. year that I felt really a, a real connection with. RIP Chester. But, um... This is one of those things where it's just like, who was fucking talking about Tom Petty before this? You know what I mean? He wasn't relevant for a while. This is yeah. this is this is the one thing like that has always got me about when these older celebrities die. Who the fuck was talking about Hugh Hefner? No one. And then everyone was throwing Hugh Hefner under the bus about being a sexist and misogynist and shit like that after he dies. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the same thing that that will probably happen with him. And it's just, you know, some, someone's going to be like, well, what about David Bowie and Prince? I'm like, those motherfuckers were still relevant. <laughs> yeah. Well, Prince was. David Bowie was. David Bowie, before he died, released his whole album that yeah. and that music video that was like, everyone's like, dude, what the fuck is this video? And then it's like, oh, he died. I'm like, oh, that was his death trap. Cool. Yeah. But uh, this is one of those things where it's like, yes, that sucks that Tom Petty died. But, like I said, the internet just was up in up in arms. I'm like, I've never heard any of you guys ever talk about Tom Petty before this. Y'all motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. It's just how I feel about the, Ve- you know, it's just how I feel about the Vegas shooting. Like, this makes me sound like a dick again, too. Like, I never change my colors or anything when a tragedy happens because I'm like, it's either going to happen again or people are going to forget about it in about a week because that's how internet culture works. Right. As fucked up as that sounds. It's already, like, fallen off the news and there's new shit going on, like... Right. And it just happened. Right. And, you know, again, R.I.P. Tom Petty, uh, your daughter should be pissed about the Rolling Stones, uh... Right. Bringing this out because I think they killed him because they had to. They're like, ah, shit. I'm pretty sure she's suing them or something. They, she should! I think she might be. She should! Like... We get he was dying and stuff, but, like, calling his death, like, fucking six hours early, that's just hella fucked up. For anybody. Right? For anybody. Don't do that shit. I know everyone's like, why, why, you know, like, don't, I saw this on, but the thing that just bothered me about it is I saw this on everyone's status. I was like, oh, Tom Petty's dead. I'm like, not yet. Research, man. (laughs) Don't just jump the gun, like, you know, it's it's just one of those things. I the just, internet has a way of doing that. If somebody starts something, it'll spread like wildfire, no matter how true it is. People will see it and be like, oh, it's gotta be true. It's like that Family Guy episode, um, let's make up a fake rumor about someone. Yeah. Um, Rob Schneider chokes himself with Mexicans from Home Depot. <laughs> it became real! <laughs> Tom Petty's dead! He's dead now! Good on you, Internet. You killed a legend. <laughs> Sex robot molested an electronics festival, creator says. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ryan, what? You have something to say? He said it got molested? Yeah. Yeah, it was on display, and people were groping it and, like, being all molesty with the sex robot. So, did he end up... He ended up taking it back in to get, like, repairs and stuff, right? right? This, this is a story. A man behind an intelligent sex robot named Samantha says kinky creation needs to be repaired thanks to barbarians at a tech industry festival. Engineer Sergi Santos of Barcelona, Spain, wanted to show off Samantha at the Arts Electronics Festival in Austria last week. The Randy robot is programmed with artificial intelligence so that she responds to gentle seduction. (laughs) Something seemingly gets more aroused the more she's romanced. That so didn't everybody ha- who's buying this robot isn't going to be able to use the robot, is what <laughs> you're telling me. This is what happened. People mounted Samantha's breast, her legs, and arms. Two fingers were broken. She was heavily soiled, he said, according to Britain's Metro News site. People can be bad because they do not understand the technology and do not have to pay for it. They treated the doll like barbarians. Even though Samantha's breasts and some of other body parts were badly damaged by the sex craze Austrian horde, the AI software and the robot still working perfectly. Monsanto asked the doll, how are you? She responded, hi, I'm fine, according to Daily Star. 
you just got like majorly fucked over and you're fine your AI is flawed, man. Aaron Lee Squire, the British engineer who helped Santos develop Samantha, told the Post he believes the robot should be treated like a lady. <laughs> I think people have just become overexcited and treated her like a sex doll. She said it was a sex doll. She isn't a sex doll. She is a robot with AR. Oh, this thing is creepy. Yeah. Right. I think I found your next girlfriend. What the hell? Yeah. Oh, people, people. Yeah, it's weird. So, I don't know how y'all feel about this. Um, Max, I, I, how y'all feeling? Like, all right, like, why? Has nobody ever taught their kids just not to touch things? Apparently not. Like this. Apparently, like this is crazy. <laughs> Someone is actually wanting reprimands for someone destroying their sex doll. I just imagine, like, a horde of, like, sex-depraved weebos just, like, climbing over each other and, like, clawing at this thing. I'm sure they were. Picture a bunch of Jacobs. (laughs) If we're being honest here. Just like, hey guys, I know I'm lonely. Samantha, love me. That AI system, though, on that sounds fucking weird. Yeah, that's creepy. Mm-hmm. Like... I wonder if you have to make her dinner, too. Probably. Pro- oh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I paid $5,000 for this. I have to make them dinner? The $5,000 on the robot was enough! <laughs> this is some next-level shit. You're basically paying for a marriage, because you're never going to get married to anything else once you buy this marriage. Yeah, no. No. Like, if that ever comes up ever while you're with somebody else, she gone. Yeah, that dog costs more than some rings do. Yeah. <laughs> right, so there's that. We're gonna we're gonna go into the uh, next news. Um male tennis fan dons a skirt after talking shit to a Wimbledon tennis player. Yeah we have this fella right here about to play some tennis. And this young man suggested body surf. (laughs) This is, oh yeah, you're right, Kim. This is so, so much against the rules here at Wimbledon. (laughs) I think she might be getting something white for him to wear. This isn't going to work. Kim, this isn't going to work. This is amazing. <laughs> Y'all British people are savage. Yeah, they are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jesus. You suck. <laughs> Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> Sometimes they wear tennis skirts. This man is going to be a legend. That's that fucking impressive. never happened in Wimbledon. No. Like, the fuck? You would never see that in Wimbledon. That's insane. The only reason it happened is because both sides called him out. Right. And it sure as fuck didn't count for shit. Wimbledon is that refined tennis where you're like, that's where they're so posh. What the fuck is this dude doing on here? That's that's awesome though. And, the, and then he tweeted back. He's like, "Thanks guys for the fun." And he's like, "Thank you. Yeah, that was really fun. It was really enjoyable." I'm like, you know what? That shit makes me excited. Right? Do y'all remember it? Yeah. Do you no. remember that dancing Pennywise scene? Yeah. It's oh become a meme, God. guys. Yeah, yeah, it's become a meme. We've got, seen so many of them. We've got some good me. We got some good ones. Yep, this is the first one I ever saw. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> it just fucking looks great. <laughs> Every song goes with this, though. They did a 2 chain song with this. Yeah, they did. I've never seen this one. You haven't? everybody it's, it's it's you know it is the internet like i said can be a weird cavalcade of terrible things and great things and then we have dancing pennywise and any song it feels like can go with dancing pennywise it's pretty great cotton eye joe i think the next one is cotton eye joe was fucking great so we're gonna end ah oh, no we're gonna end with what stay down stay down damn you computer <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna end with uh what what in the world is 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 our boy DT doing today? Our the, friendly neighborhood Cheeto, the Don. What? Who's he feuding with today, Ryan? Who do you think? Who do you think the Don is feuding feuding with Who today? Who the fuck is Don? The Donald, Trump. our president. Yeah. Oh, Donald Trump. Who? Um, probably the uh, whoever just got a hurricane. Puerto Rico. Yeah. Donald Trump is 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 now calling shit on Puerto Rico. Yeah. Um, we have some great things to talk about. President Donald Trump calls out Puerto Rico's nasty, nasty mayor, saying that the Democrats got to her and told her, told, told her, told her to be nasty to the Donald. After people are dying in Puerto Rico from the hurricane. <laughs> and he's like, why do they have, can't they fend for themselves? I'm like... I don't think he understands that Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. You know what I mean? I mean, he has sent some stuff there. Right. But not a hell of a lot. Like, he... That's the thing, like... He, we, we have done a great job with almost impossible situation in Puerto Rico. Outside the fake news, our politically motivated ingrates. People are now starting to recognize the amazing work that has been done by FEMA and our great military. All buildings now inspected. Trump's person, gen, three-star general he brought there is like, dude, you need to work on this and things like that. But you know, the Donald's a nice man. He, he is, he is. He, he did give something, guys. Do you know what he gave? Then the U.S. Golf tro- presidential golf trophy. What? He's like, this trophy is in honor of the victims of Hurricane Irma, Maurice, and Jose. We honor this trophy for you. Yeah. Yeah. The Don, uh, you know, the thing that's weird about the, this story is that, like, he, he's, we've gone with how thick-skinned the man is, the thin-skinned the man is. One person says, it's, the speech, but... From the from the fucking from the mayor of San Juan is actually a very understandable speech. You know what I mean? Like 
Trump is like, it was not as bad as Katrina. Calm yourself. I'm like, this isn't a fucking nation that you are a territory on that is dying. Right. It doesn't matter if it was as bad as Katrina or not. Still, like, send a large group of people down there and help this shit out. Like, he's like, nasty lady always saying nasty things about me. I'm like, brah, you gave them a trophy. (laughs) <laughs> for surviving. They gave him a participation trophy. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Congratulations, you made it through. <laughs> like, not only that, he put the two white people hurricanes in front of them. <laughs> That's how participation this trophy is to me. You know what I mean? Like, the Donald is just... I mean, I'm glad he's not feuding with ESPN. Anymore. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reckoning coming and I'm feeling it. God. And another story I have is that um, his uh, head of Homeland, uh, one of his heads dropped down because he was using private jets to fly everywhere. $10,000, $100,000 of our tax money being used for these private flights. <laughs> and when Trump was asked about this, he's like, I'm going to fire him. I'm like, you do the same thing, though. You know what I mean? And then his, like, in, his ambassador to North Korea is trying to soften things up with North Korea. Be like, hey, man, we're, Donald Trump is just kidding. And on Twitter, he's like, don't waste your time. We're going to let Rocket Man know. Don't waste your energy. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? He wants to start a war Dude, at we're this about point. to go to war with North Korea. <laughs> right? Like, at this point, there's not even just joking around. He's, like, trying to get a war to fucking start. And he's not going to throw the first blow so he's just going to let them just fester in the shit he keeps saying. I, you know, I, I, I you know, we, we make jokes here on the tangent. We, we do talk about lighthearted things. But this, th- you, remember last year, 2016, where we could make jokes like this, and like we thought weren't going to happen? Right, where we were making fun of Trump running for the election because we were like, this motherfucker's never making it. And he won, and he won smartly. And I've got to give him that. I will, I will give him that. But now you got to shut the fuck up and do your job. Right. You know what I mean? He, Somebody take his phone away from him. Right. We already played that song last week. It's just like, man, I'm actually really excited what South Park has for tonight about what's happening. Because it, it just... I'm surprised he hasn't gone after South Park. He probably laughs at it and thinks they're, like, helping him, promoting him or something like that. <laughs> like, like, dude, this is not when the time to talk shit is not during a national disaster. And someone really pointed this out, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, he pointed, someone pointed this out as, like, how Trump reacted to the tragedy in Las Vegas compared to how he reacted to the tragedy in uh, Puerto Rico mm. is that Trump sounded like he didn't give a shit about the people of Puerto Rico. And that to me is like, that's not a good, like, because I don't think Trump understand like, maybe he does. But if you're born in Puerto Rico, you're a U.S. citizen. You're not a state, but you're a U.S. territory, so you're part of the U.S. So, yes, you do go there. And do that. But the thing about it is, is like we said beforehand, he's cut down on the budget of FEMA and the Coast Guard. So, I don't think, I was actually talking to my dad about this. He's like, he's like, the thing about this is he can praise how good FEMA did, but FEMA's doing a shit job because of what he did with the tax cuts and budget cuts and all that for military and things like that. So it's insane to me to like be like, FEMA's doing great. I'm like, with $4 billion less and multiple natural disasters, yeah, FEMA's doing okay. And to me, these are people... The thing he the thing he said about this is like, well, Puerto Rico's in debt, so it's their own fault. I'm like, motherfucker, you put... The U.S. put them in debt. Right. It wasn't just Puerto Rico. People go to Puerto Rico, like, you went over, you went over there. And it's yeah. just the same way when people go to the Philippines and shit like that. They don't see the nitty-gritty. They see the fashionable lifestyle that they have. No, we saw some nitty-gritty. You know what I mean, though, but people aren't there to be like, I'm here to help you. No, I'm here to get fucked up, drink some Jose Cuervo, that 
Maybe yeah. have snake venom in it and go on a spirit trip. So, with that in mind, um, like with the Las Vegas, we are also going to put down the uh, How to Help Puerto Rico down in our links down below because we here, I put money in there. I'm not saying this out as a humble brag, but I think we can do all make a difference. Send food, help them out because, you know, we want to, as a country, and as a human race, I think. I don't know about what you guys think, because I don't speak for you, even though I'm your supreme leader, apparently. Yeah, King's a dictator. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, man, here I am being a dictator, telling you that. Max, talk all you want. Speak your little heart out. Don't tell me how to live, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I just want to end with, like, I think everyone should learn to start learn to love each other. Yes, there's some times I get into spats with these guys, but I still love them. They are like my brothers. Not as dumb. And I just, I think we, if we, we just take a, take a back seat and just think about what the things we do. Maybe we shouldn't tweet how the NFL sucks and calls people sons of bitches. Maybe we should, we should all just take a moment and learn that we should do our fucking job. <laughs> so, this has been The Tangent. I am uh, your supreme leader and host, Kian. Uh, I'm your humble, humble subordinate, Max. I'm Rye Guy. <laughs>